In this video, we're going to discuss the core concepts of object-oriented programming. First, we'll discuss classes and objects, and then we'll learn the four core concepts, which are abstraction, inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. In object-oriented programming, parts of the program are treated as objects. Objects that are derived from the real world. These can be physical objects like a button, window, spaceship. People are also treated as objects. For example, student, teacher, manager. Ideas or concepts can also be objects. School grade, course, bank account, database connection, etc. Classes. The classes define how an object will be constructed. So here we have a class diagram. So in a class diagram, classes are illustrated with a box. The box will have three parts. The first part would be the name. So in this example, we have the car class. And then the box will be divided into an upper and the lower section. The upper section would be for the attributes. Attributes are data that a class contain, properties that make up the class, or information about the class. The lower section would be for the methods. Methods are the class's behavior, actions that the class can perform, events that may happen to the class, or a reaction to other classes. Attributes describe a has relationship with its class. So the car has a brand, the car has a model, the car has color, the car has speed. On the other hand, methods describe a can relationship with its class. So the car can start, the car can accelerate, the car can stop. So here we have another class called player. The player has attributes and methods. The player has name, it has spawn location, it has skin, player has level, player has HP, and player has MP. Player can start, player can attack, player can die, player can respawn, and player can use whatever object, like a weapon maybe. Objects. Our program will not interact directly with the classes. Classes are used as blueprints on how an object will be created. Just like in construction, the blueprint contains the plan on how something is going to be built. The actual house will be the object. In our class diagram, we have the car class. Below are two objects created from the car class. Objects describe an is a relationship with its class. So we go is a car. Toyota is a car. So whatever attributes and methods the car class have will be passed down to its objects. So we go will have a brand. It's going to have a model. It's going to have color. It's going to have speed. Wego will be able to start, accelerate, and stop. Same thing for Toyota. It's going to have brand, model, all the attributes of the car class, and all the methods of the car class. The process of creating objects is called instantiation. An object can also be referred to as an instance. So here is a more familiar example. In the class diagram, we have the scanner class. So we don't directly use scanner. In our programs, in our previous programs, we instantiate scanner by creating an object called SC. So SC is just an object name. We can uh, assign any name that we want. It's just that on this example, we called it SC. So SC is a scanner. So using SC, we'll be able to use all the scanner methods available. Class libraries. So most OOP languages provide many pre-written generic classes. At minimum, you have classes for strings, dates, collections, file, input and output, networking, and uh, many more. So in C Sharp, you get the console class, which is equivalent to your scanner class in Java. So here we have a class diagram with four classes. So we have the main class, student class, teacher class, and the room class. These three classes have the same attribute, which is the name. Student and teacher can say hi. Room can accommodate. 